Hello everyone. In this video, we will look at how to solve the SVM constraint optimization problem. For this, we will make use of Lagrange, which is a very important and useful tool to solve optimization problems. So to introduce Lagrange, first let's consider an optimization problem similar to what we have in the SVM case. So we have a problem of the form min w of f of w, where w is a parameter of the function f of w. And we have to minimize this. So this is our optimization. We have to optimize for this. Subject to constraints. And now the constraints can be of generally two forms equality and inequality so first let's consider just the equality constraint let suppose we have constraints such that h i of w is equal to zero for i is equal to one to l so this is generally the data instances for us so that's why we have a similar form here a number of equality constraints so for in our problem this constraint has to hold for all the data points. All the data points have to occur outside the margin. So that was our formulation of the margin, remember? So here we have a similar form just for understanding purposes. We have for each data point, we have an equality constraint hi of w is equal to zero. So for this generic form, I'm just drawing a parallel to SVM. This is not the SVM optimization problem but just another generic problem with an equality constraint and now for this problem we can define Lagrangian as follows so Lagrangian L of W comma beta so we are adding another parameter beta for the Lagrange is equal to f of W this is the original function that we are going to optimize and to that, we add our constraints with a coefficient of beta i, which is our Lagrange multipliers. So beta i's are called Lagrange multipliers. They are coefficients for each of our constraints, which are given by h i of w. We have a sigma i is equal to 1 to l for all denoting all the constraints. Now, instead of solving this problem, so this is the, let's mark it number one. So this is problem number one. Instead of solving this, we solve the new problem that we constructed using the Lagrange, which is marked by two. So now to solve this problem, it is similar to other problems that we have discussed in the past in this course. We differentiate with respect to the parameters, which is W and beta we differentiate with respect to that partial derivatives and set them equal to zero and solve for w and beta which are our parameters of the Lagrangian so once we have the parameters of the Lagrangian we are solved this constraint optimization problem so that is how we solve this right so once we have w we have f of w and then we can say this is the value of f of w when uh, it is minimized so that is what we will get when we solve this problem now let's generalize it to have equality and inequality constraints now we have a minimum of w over f of w such that gi of w less than or equal to zero so which is a inequality constraint right and then we also have our original equality constraints which we discussed in the beginning right and then we have this for different values of i and now our generalized Lagrangian has three parameters right we have Two sets of constraints now so we have three parameters we have w and we have 
alpha and we have beta now note that i said three but then it's not really three right because all these are vectors in reality so alpha is the group of alpha i's which are qualifying our inequality constraints beta are all the beta i's which are coefficients of our equality constraints i'm just for notation purposes i have three vectors here w alpha and beta for all these all the variables all the sorry all the parameters that are there in our lagrange so now generalized lagrangian has this form l of w alpha beta f of w which is our original function that we want to minimize and then this is our inequality and these are equality constraints and now alpha i's and beta i's are our lagrange multipliers similar to what we saw before now we have another new set of lagrange multipliers to qualify um, to act as coefficients of our inequality constraints all right so now we have defined lagrange so lagrange is a very useful tool for solving the constraint optimization problem so now instead of solving this problem number one again we are going to solve problem number two that we constructed using lagrange okay and now we are going to see how there could be two versions of this problem that we could solve and one is called the primal optimization problem one another problem version of this is called the dual optimization problem and for svms we are going to convert the primal into a dual problem and solve the dual instead of the primal and that's when it becomes easier for us to apply the kernel trick that is why we will do that so that is the reason for doing that so why are we uh, doing that if you ask me why not solve the primal solve why are we solving the dual that's because we are going to extend that to other um, forms and use the kernel trick and it make, makes it easier i'm just introducing that here if you're not understanding what i mean i just want you to remember this uh, when you are watching these videos so you can understand and and um, cash it back oh yeah that's what she said and this is how we do it so just introducing that here okay all right so now the primal version of the problem we already have um um this this problem defined in one so we write this as theta p of w so that is a problem where we solve for w we minimize over w right so we write theta p of w to be the primal function primal function and that is equal to maximization of alpha beta of l of w alpha beta so if we take this entire lagrange and optimize and solve it only for alpha and beta maximize alpha and beta in the lagrange then we'll get the primal function theta p of w if w violates the primal constraints primal constraints are nothing but these which we already have defined so this is the primal optimization problem right so this these are the primal constraints if w violates the primal constraints then theta p of w is equal to infinity so we're not going to go into too much detail on all every single equation here because that will take a lot of time we are going to touch on the topics that are really important to us to understand svms so i'm going to just lay it out here and then proceed to the next step so theta p of w is equal to zero when it violates the primal sorry equal to infinity when it violates the primal constraints now when it does not violate the primal constraints then it is equal to f of w so this is just to understand how primal and dual are related so that's why we are laying this foundation here so theta p of w is equal to f of w if it satisfies the constraints equal to infinity otherwise so to how do we understand this we say that theta p has the same value as the objective 
in our problem. Remember the objective in our problem that we want to optimize is, is f of w, right? This is what we want to optimize. So we are saying that we define theta p of w, the primal function, and then we said that this value is equal to infinity if it does not satisfy the constraints. Otherwise, it is equal to our original objective itself that satisfies the primal constraints and is positive infinity if constraints are violated, right? So now, when we consider minimizing theta p of w over w, then we can write this as min of w max of alpha beta Lagrange, right? Because we know that this quantity here is theta p of w because that is how we defined it. We considered theta p of w is equal to max of alpha beta Lagrange. Now this reduces to min of w over f of w because theta p of w is equal to f of w if it satisfies the constraints infinity otherwise. So now substituting that here we get we get min of w over f of w which is our original problem. Now consider the flipped version of this problem where theta d of alpha beta so we defined theta p of w as maximizing the rest of the parameters in the Lagrange. Now the dual of alpha beta is equal to minimizing the rest of the parameters which is w. So we have three parameters right w alpha beta right. We already said that we are only optimizing for alpha beta in in the primal right and now in the dual we are only considering optimizing for w in the dual so that's how we are defining it theta d of alpha beta equal to min of w lagrange so theta p is maximizing with respect to alpha beta theta d is minimizing with respect to w right because minimizing with respect to w is our original problem so we have three parameters we have to optimize for all three parameters right so we have to maximize for alpha beta minimize for w and we are just splitting that into two different versions of the problem to consider primal and dual i hope now it's starting to make sense we are trying to see that okay so if i only optimize for alpha beta and then it becomes a function of w and then i want to see where this leads me and then uh, the other version of the problem is i want to only optimize for w keeping alpha beta and then see where that leads me that's the dual version so we have these two versions of the problem now so the dual optimization problem maximizing or alpha beta theta d of alpha beta is nothing but maximizing alpha beta and theta d is defined as min of w over Lagrange. Now this is same as our primal problem but the order of max and min are exchanged. Right? So the max is outside and the min is inside but in the primal problem, the min was outside and the max was inside. Now, we want to establish a relationship between these two versions, primal and dual. Now, we can say that max and max min of Lagrange, so it's all the same function, right? The in function is the same. You're optimizing for the same set of parameters in both sides. 
just the order is different. Now, the optimal solution to the primer problem is given by P star. The optimal solution to the dual problem is given by D star, right? Now, just by rule of max min, we know that max min of something is always less than or equal to min max of something. Now, we are not interested in the less than symbol here, but we are interested in the equal to for sure. So, there is a solution where D star and P star can be the same. In other words, we can solve the dual problem and find the optimal solution P star instead of solving the primal version of the problem. Now, there are a set of constraints under which conditions, under which D star is equal to P star, when this holds, because we are only interested in, in the conditions where D star is equal to P star, because we are interested in solving the dual version of the problem. So those conditions are called Karush, Kuhn, and Tucker conditions after the people that came up with these conditions. And there are a number of conditions here under these conditions. If all these hold, then D star equal to P star. In other words, the solution to the dual problem and the optimal solution to the primal problem are both one and the same. And these conditions actually give us additional leverage in SVNs. And the important condition here to note is this one, which we will revisit again. Other conditions, I don't want you to really memorize them, but they also have to hold. But this one condition really is um, something that we will look at again. So I want you to just take note of this. Now, what does this condition mean? The solution to alpha i, the Lagrange multiplier, multiplied by g i star, g i w i star, is equal to zero which means that gi star i'm just going to right so the inequality condition multiplied by alpha the solution to lagrange is equal to zero. What does that, that mean? So we know that for all points that are not on the margin. So we had this, this, I'm just going to draw a small version here so we can understand. So we have a graph like this. And then we have lots of points. And then we had a line separating them. Right? And then we said there are margin lines. Right? I'm just going to draw them in dotted lines. And I'm going to draw big the points that are on the margin. So let's say these are the points that are on the margin. I'm just enlarging them just to understand, just for the purposes of us going over them. So let's say these are the points that are on the margin, right? So there are points that are away from the margin. These points here, all these points, and these points. Now think about this. So G i of W less than, so the, the, this one, this, this statement here has two, two meanings, right? G i of W can be less than 0. G i of W can be equal to 0. So now this is the constraint. So this is the constraint which says that a, 
a all data points are away from the line at least a margin away from the line so which so when they are less than zero they are really away from the margin these are all less than zero right what happens when they're equal to zero those are points that are occurring on the margin so remember we had a line and we are increasing the boundary increasing the margin until the margin encounters a data point and then we draw the, draw the line there draw the margin line there so which is the dotted line now these points are on the margin so for them the points on the margin gi of w is zero and when it is already zero then alpha i can have a non-zero value for these all other points gi of w is less than zero which means alpha has to be zero because of this constraint right this constraint really helps us identify the points that really matter to the classification now for all points that are really away from the margin now they are not really influencing the placement of the line or the placement of the margin so they don't matter but the points close to the line which are going to be on the margin for those gi of w is equal to zero right and that's when alpha i star can have a non-zero value because for others we know that gi of w is strictly less than zero or strictly greater than zero we know that they are they are completely away right so for those alpha i has to be zero right so because this is non-zero if this is non-zero then this is zero right because the multiplication is zero right so for the those ones which are on the margin gi of w is equal to zero and hence alpha i can have a non-zero value so we are essentially rest saying which points are really important and not really solving this for all these points that are there in the space we are saying points only close to the line matter those points end up being on the margin and for those we will learn a non-zero solution to alpha and beta right so that's why this becomes really relevant and uh, we'll look at this again when one more time in another video just so that it's clear but this is a really important point and uh, another thing to add here is that these points for which g i of w is zero and alpha i is non zero they those are called the support vectors now that's why the name support vector machines because we need those points those points are the more important points to focus on they are on the margin they are closer to the line they define the placement of the line all right we'll continue this in the next video thank you